Well, hello and good evening, everybody. Hope you're having one hell of a night. That's great. I'm glad y'all came out to see me. This is my first stand-up performance, so I ask you'll all be gentle. In fact, asking that question does actually kind of remind me of another big first time in my life, if you know what I mean. It's probably just all the bright lights and strangers staring at me. Kind of have to wonder if I'm going to leave it the same $20 and cents of shame I had last time. Hey, that'd be great. So, yeah, how's it going, everybody? You know, it's funny, I, I write comedy uh, and try to produce comedy on YouTube for a living. I've actually found that, um, well, uh, Thoreau once wrote that most men live lives of quiet desperation. I've definitely found that since I've become a YouTuber, I'm living a life of much more vocal desperation. Oh. But yeah, I mean, speaking of desperation, yeah, I recently tried online dating again. That's been interesting, yeah. Last time I tried online dating, I was actually shopping for a used car on Craigslist because I'm a YouTuber a la broke. Um, yeah, and I found, I found a really strange uh, set, of, set of similarities between this. So I want you to tell me if, this, if I'm talking about shopping for a used car on Craigslist or if I'm looking at okay cupid thoughts um let's see the first one she runs every day but makes an intermittent squealing noise there's something wrong with the wire yeah all right um also there's um used professionally daily some cosmetic damage still a lot of life left in her yeah or my own personal favorite uh i just want this thing off of my lawn Yeah, with that, though, it, it is funny, though. Desperation really seems to be a sort of central part of comedy, one way or the other. I mean, just we look at Louis C.K., and we can see exactly what that manifests like when it's left to fester. Um, but no, I mean, I, I joke, but Louis is Louis an honest, like, comedy god. He really is. Um, you know, so, I mean, another, another big comedy legend, I'd say, Norm MacDonald. Um, really, really sort of central part to comedy, I've found over the over the years is um, you gotta you, you need to subvert expectations with your jokes, right? You need to just subvert expectations whenever you can, and Norm really did that in a big way this last week by apologizing twice. Yeah, Norm Macdonald apologizing. I mean, what the fuck kind of world are we living in? So let me get serious for a second with you um <laughs> this is a shit show and it's going to be fucking hilarious to watch and see how it pans out now you might remember a few years back there was a thing called gamergate yeah now with gamergate one of the funnier parts of it was that um well one of the things we routinely heard said by people objective sort of observers who may not be involved was that um, in the efforts of the crusading outrage monger scene, the social justice warriors and so on, um, well, it was funny because after they bullied their way into academia, after they bullied their way into controlling certain aspects of the media in general, be it TV or movies or comic books and the like, what we found is them going after gamers, and a lot of people said, dumb fucking move. Rightfully so. It was a dumb move. Like, the last people you really want to try and bully into seeing things your way? Gamers, right? But it was funny because at that same time, I remember wondering if this would happen. And I remember wondering when they would go for yet another medium in which people are oftentimes making sort of edgy kind of comments, sort of, uh, sort of maybe potentially offensive or insensitive comments. And that, of course, is comedy, right? Now, I've been hoping for comedy gate for a while just maybe not in this particular fashion but all the same and the reason is, is because in the same way that we used to say that the one people you don't want to go after are gamers you know because they know how to grind they know how to take shit from people well tell me this you take your average gamer and and, and how used to being shit on they might be and tell me if you don't think a stand-up comic or a professional comedian is the kind of person who knows a thing or two about dealing with uppity bitches who maybe don't like what they're doing. The last person on fucking earth you want to try and tell how to do their job is a fucking comedian. 
And it's funny too, though, because in regards to things like subverting expectations, I mean, when we consider the reactions to edgy jokes, to, to, to really sort of, uh, to, to sort of spicy comics and comedians, and the sort of shit that comes out of their mouth, it, it's funny because you would expect a group of adults who know and supposedly, potentially, purportedly enjoy comedy would understand, you know, that comedians are not the people that they might like to look up to. These are people who are, by their very natures, by the nature of their fucking craft, these are people who are fucked in the head. These are people who are neurotic, self-obsessive, have problems with relationships, have problems with sex, have problems with societal issues in general, and the way that they cope with it is by making jokes. Now, we're gonna get into that in a minute. But at the same time, it is kind of funny, because in the same way that while they were looking at Louis C.K., wondering how a man who built a career based on uh, making jokes, quips, and telling stories about his sexual inadequacy or his, his failings in relationships would actually, in real life, be an awkward and weird and kind of creepy guy. Well, honestly, if you were looking at Louis C.K., in the hopes of finding some well-rounded, emotionally healthy adult who's going to show you the way forward, well, then I'll say you're barking up the wrong fucking tree then, bud. Now, speaking of barking, how about that Me Too movement, huh? You know? You know, recently we had Norm MacDonald coming out, sort of expressing first some empathy for a friend of his, a fellow comic, who fell beneath the outrage mob. And then even after that, you know, you know sort of defending his other comics in the course of such showing flagrant disrespect to a movement which itself, at its top sort of leadership levels, um, are showing to be about as uh, forthcoming, forthright, and honest in respect to their relations to what's going on according to their movement, as I would say Amy Schumer is when it comes to writing original comedy bits. Now, when it comes to this matter of apology, I'll say to Norm MacDonald and anybody else who's watching, do not ever fucking apologize. And it's not just for the same reasons that other people say, because a healthy-minded, rational adult looks to somebody who maybe has done wrong, they look to them in the hopes of finding an apology so that they can see that the person has actually recognized that maybe they made a mistake and they get the opportunity to forgive them. To say, well, they clearly just made a mistake here, so let's move on. Good on you for recognizing it. That's not who we're dealing with. These are not the people who are actually uh, demanding these apologies. These are not the people who want you to apologize, be you a comic or comic artist or a video game developer or whatever you might be. If you're out there producing content, producing media, and you're offending some people and they demand an apology, it's not so much so that they can see that you recognize you did something wrong as much as it is so that they can be validated and they're finger pointing as they shake a righteous and pudgy fist at you. But beyond this, when it gets down to the nature of comedy itself, right, let's consider our entertainment uh, options. Let's consider what sort of escapist notions people will often sort of uh, imply when it comes to things like movies, uh, books, video games, comedy, entertainment in general. Now, when it comes to narrative storytelling, I guess there could be a case to be made about, you know, sensitivity and inclusion, although that is weak sauce to the weakest of degrees. But when it comes to comedy, we, I think, as a society, need to take a few moments to sort of step back and try and remember exactly what it is that comedy is actually about. It's not just about telling shitty dad jokes or asking why the chicken crossed the road. It's actually a matter of reflection. Comedians, as artists, are themselves agents of reflection for society. It's not just that they're able to look at all of the horrid shit that we see going on in the world and make fun of it, but it's that they're able to actually help us digest the kinds of shit that we have to deal with on a daily basis, the kind of shit that drags us down. And whenever you see the outrage mongers going after them, when you take a look at the kinds of shit that they sort of support, we can get an idea of where they think comedy is going, and through the absence of laughs outside of the crowd in this clip, you'll see exactly what I mean. Mm, did I hear someone say they wanted to hear my dad's Google history? <laughs> Google history. And so, yeah, 
right there. That's, that's, that's someone's vision of comedy. Now, I'm not here to tell them that what's funny to them isn't you know, funny at all because it's not funny to me. That's not fair. But at the same time, even in that, we do see a reflection of something awkward in the world. Now, this comes in varying degrees. You can have clean comics. You can have your Dave Couliers if you want. But at the same time, you're going to end up with your Bob Saggots. Even furthermore, you're going to end up with your Anthony Jesselnecks, the kinds of people who openly make a point to uh, make jokes about immediate tragedies as they happen or just shortly after. And one of the greatest responses he ever gave when I heard somebody, when I heard about criticisms uh, being leveled at him, this was in one of his stand-up specials, was him saying that, well, um, people ask him oftentimes, so don't you respect the victims? His answer was, yeah, of course I do, but when a tragedy occurs, the victims aren't on Twitter. They're busy doing victim shit. This is the nature of the society that we live in and why it, I, why it is, I feel at least, that the comedian the comic, the entertainer, the joker, the jester, that they, I hope to say we, are the most important people when it comes to social commentary. Anybody can actually offer some hot take. Anybody can give you the sort of popular rundown of an issue. But it takes a special kind of demented sort of mind to be able to look at a horrible thing and find a way to make it less horrible by making it fucking funny. Let's consider racism or sexism, bigotry, hatred, all of these things which so many people seem to dedicate their entire lives to combating. But in their combating it, all they're doing is screeching, bitching, and moaning, usually on social media or sometimes at a podium. But what do the comics do? Well, if you consider an honest racist joke, and by an honest racist joke, I mean a joke that is made honestly, just to make you laugh. It's not meant to express any sincere hatred of another person, but it's just simply something to make you laugh. What does that do to the concept of racism in the course of the joke being made? If not, undoing it by not taking it seriously and considering it a joke. This is what we need to be getting back to as a mature and rational society, I would say. Uh, getting back to joking about things, taking away their power by regarding them as not as serious as they would wish us to regard them as being. This is the nature behind jokes about racism, jokes about public tragedies, jokes about general public strife and problems in the worlds that we live in. Why are these important? Because when we break it down, there does seem to be two primary approaches one can take to combating the evils of the world. One is to rage and rail against them in earnest, full bore, both barrels, every conceivable opportunity. We see this on Twitter, and we usually typically call them, rightly, virtue signals. But at the same time, what is the other option? Well, it's to make fun of it. It's to not take it seriously. Because I'm going to let you all in on a little secret about the world, and if you uh, outrage mongers out there, if you, if you uh, social justice warriors, or racial justice warriors, or whatever the fuck you might be, if you're watching this, I want to let you know something. Bad shit will always happen. It will routinely and continually happen. It's sort of the defining characteristic of life in this universe. And guess what? There are two ways we can go about addressing it. We can stew in our outrage and our upset. We can shake our fists at it and call for an end, knowing full well it'll never actually end. It'll just change shape or be replaced by something equally horrendous. Or we could step back and take its power away by having a laugh about it by understanding that it's only as serious as we allow it to be, and that even if it is a life-or-death matter, something which needs to be tackled and addressed right away, there's time for that. But there's also time to make a joke. There's time to make cracks about it. There's time to take it less seriously, to bring levity to an otherwise dark and dreary situation. Because if we fail to do that, we all just end up depressed, neurotic wrecks. Which is funny, because that is actually the nature of the comedian in the first place. The depressed, neurotic mess. If we're gonna leave you with anything, let it be this. Comedians are fucking weird people. They are some of the darkest, most twisted people you're going to find. There's a reason so many of them end up hooked on drugs or killing themselves. And that if you're going to look to those people simply because they're standing in a spotlight and hope that they are going to espouse the virtues and, and ideals that you hold true without making fun of anything, or that they're going to maintain some solid track record of never offending anyone and never saying anything off color, then you're looking at the wrong fucking people. The nature of comedy is one which takes the weirder, darker, 
more awkward, more terrifying, more terrible aspects of our life in this world and tries to make them just a little less awful by making them a little more funny. So that's my set, folks. Thank you all for coming out. Hope you enjoyed your night. I'll see you either on this channel or on YouTube Saints, or maybe you'll see me digging digital on the roadside. And all this effort proves to be for naught. Bye.